Yeah, the title of my message, we've been doing the fasting 52 days fast for people that are not aware. Maybe they're new here today. If you're new here today, we welcome you into the presence of the Almighty and we pray that the Lord will speak to you in Jesus' name. So we've been, we started the 52 days on the 13th of um, January and we're continuing till, I think the last day is the 4th of March. And every week, God has been helping us to grow in this virtue. So we have been growing in different virtue and the love of God and the peace of God and the joy of the Lord and the in patience and in forgiveness last week. This week is followership. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about followership today. So the title of my message, I don't have a choice is, are you a true follower? Ask your neighbor this morning. Are you a true follower? Are you a true follower? Okay, so in the text that we just read, Jesus chose some to follow him and others followed by signs and wonders. If you read that text so well, when I read it, I had some questions in my heart because the first one we read says, Jesus chose two brothers. They were both fishermen and Jesus called them to follow and they followed him. And I, and I said, Jesus... Why did you choose fishermen? I mean, the second two brothers were also fishermen with their dad, isn't it? Why did you decide to choose fishermen? There are other people around that city that would have been doing, you know, maybe childcare like me or, you know, cake like Tai or, you know, other businesses. But Jesus decided to go and choose the fishermen. And I was wondering why. I believe in, well, I believe to my understanding that is because he was looking for skilled men, men who can take risk, men who are hardworking. Being a fisherman is not easy. Sitting in the sun all day long, you don't even know whether you're going to catch one or many. You risk your life in the storm they are in the boat trying to catch fishes. Men who can easily believe the truth and they demonstrated it by following him and leaving all. Then Jesus chose two sets of brothers. They were both, both brothers. The first set of brothers and the second set of brothers. Why? Why did he? He values families. God values families. There's something about families working together. The enemy always targets families. And that is why as a Christian, you must not condone or allow strife to thrive in your family. You must never be the source of the strife. You must always be the one that wants to make peace amongst your siblings or your family. Amen? He wanted men that has team spirit. The two brothers were working together. He must have watched them the way they were both working together. Now, he now took the last set of brothers from their father. They were doing the business with their father. Do you know how much it took their father to convince them to join him in the fishing business? He must have fasted and prayed. He must have done so much. And the day the two brothers, two brothers didn't even get only one, decided to go and follow in that line to help his business to grow. One day, this strange man was walking by and said, come and follow me. And they looked at their dad and said, dad, we love you so much, but we have to answer the call of God. May you answer the call of God when it's your time in Jesus' name. May you answer his call. You see, the call of God can come in different forms. It can come in different forms. It can come so little that you need not even know that it is the call of God. It can come in a big way. It's not, you don't have to be a pastor to answer the call of God. No. You don't have to be a pastor. Why did men choose these two brothers and took them away from their fathers? Because he needed men that know how to action a vision. Men that knows how to action a vision. They believed in their father's vision and they put it into action. I'm sure the business would have been thriving more than before. But you know what? As the father released them, because I was thinking, what of if he didn't release them? I don't know what would have happened. But he must have released them. And as he has released them, more um, burden bearers would have come to him. 
Because as you give, you do what? You receive. Amen? So I believe his business won't have crashed because of his two sons. Before you can be a follower, before you can be a leader, you would have been a follower. If you've never been a follower, you cannot be a good leader. Don't go to study how to be a leader. Don't go to school to go and do a course of how to be a leader if you have not been a follower. A lot of people will go and do a course of how to be a leader instead of how to be a follower. The secret of being a leader is in the following. Amen? Jesus chose his followers. And then the crowd chose him. The crowd chose him. He chose some followers, but the crowd chose him through the demonstration of the power of the Almighty. They chose him. Many will choose you in the name of Jesus. You see, you know why they will choose you? They will choose you to announce your calling. Men will choose you to announce your calling. There's a calling upon your life. And it is men that will announce that calling. So as the people chose him, they started to announce his calling. That this man is sent by God. He can heal. He can deliver. He can open the eyes of the blind. Blind. He can release those that are in bondage. They started to, the Bible says, 10 towns. You'll be announced more than 10 towns. You'll be announced to the nations in the name of Jesus. Whatever the case is, it is important to be a follower. A follower should be willing to answer the call. Three things about a follower. Must be ready to answer the call. Anytime you are called, you may be called to prayer. You may be called to study the word for a particular calling. Maybe working in, prof um, um, in, the, in the prophecy or seeing vision or prayer or teaching of the word. You can be called in different areas. You can be called through your own profession. You must be willing to answer the call. Those two four brothers, they were willing. They answered the call. The Bible didn't tell us that they started arguing between each other. Are you going? Do you know the man? How can you just follow somebody that you don't know? The Bible didn't record all that. I don't know whether it happened. But all I know is that the Bible said they rose up and dropped everything and followed him. Two, you must understand that the purpose of your calling is more to do with you than the one that is calling you. A lot of times when we're called by men, when we're called, we're thinking, ah, what do you want to do? What am I going to do for this person now? We're thinking of ourselves. But what we don't understand, that the calling has to do with you, not with them. It's to groom you. It's to correct you. It's to guide you. Is to take you to that place that God wants you to be. Number three, understand that a good follower makes a better leader. A good follower makes a better leader. You see, if you follow me now, for example, you will follow me, you will be close to me, depending on how long you have been following me. As you follow me, then you become closer. You know more about me. You know my strength, you know my weakness. If you are a good follower, you will, you will master my strength. You will also master my weakness. And then you will be determined that, no, I will be strong in this area. So you will become the strong person that will cover my weakness. Because you are my follower. You will master the mistakes I always make. And because you are my follower, you will master how to make sure that those mistakes are not shown to the world. As you master that skill, what are you doing? You are developing yourself. That's what makes you a better leader. Amen? A follower is not a servant. A lot of people get it wrong. Some people think because they're following somebody, they're doing all sorts of things, then they become a servant. They will say, well, I feel as if I'm just a slave to that person. No. A follower is different from a servant. A follower... 
follows in the footsteps of the leader, a servant waits on the leader. The greatest tra uh, tragedy of followership is to lose the heart of your leader. Never lose the heart of your leader. If you lose the heart of your leader, you will pay back a long time to gain him back. A follower must never lose the heart of the leader. If we equate it to a husband and wife, if a wife or a husband lose the heart of their spouse, it takes a lot to gain it back. You must never do anything that will make you lose the heart of your leader. Amen? A follower has full access to the leader. The servant has a restricted access. There's some things a servant can never know about a leader. But a follower is exposed to know everything. Because the leader trusts the follower. The follower has a relationship with the leader. The servant is to be called to do things. The follower is going along to do things with the, the leader. Do you see the difference? In the making of men, followership is important. In the making of men, for a man, a man to become who God asked him to be, Followership is important. You must have someone that will follow you. Number three, a follower eventually becomes a leader. A servant remains a servant unless they become free, like we learned last Sunday. It is the men behind that makes the men ahead. I read it as a quote. It is the men behind that makes the men ahead. So when you see great men, some men has made them. They were not born like that. Who have you made? A follower must be able to lead and follow. A follower, in fact, I want everybody to say that one. A follower, a follower. must be able to lead and to follow. Am I disturbing you going up and down? Yeah, okay. A follower must be able to lead and follow. If you are not able to follow, don't think about leading. If it's too difficult for you to follow your boss at work, follow your husband at home, because he's the leader, he's the one that sees the vision. A woman is meant to follow the husband. Now, not like a slave, don't forget, but a follower. Amen? Women, get it right. You are not a slave. The fact that they ask you to submit does not make you a slave. Hallelujah. You are not a slave, but you are a follower. Amen? A follower, this is the last one for that, followers are imitators of their leader. Followers are imitators of their leader. 1 Corinthians 11 1. 1 Corinthians 11 1. And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. You should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Some followers feel they're better than their leaders. Some followers, when the leader is giving instruction, they're thinking, I know better than that. I can do it better than that. Instead of you asking me to, to go that way all around, I can just take this shortcut and get to the place. Why is he asking me to go this way? But you never know that because the leader had already gone through the shortcut, and while they were going through the shortcut, they tread upon scorpions and lions. They didn't want you to go shortcuts. They have been there before. So they said, go this way. It's the wiser way. Some followers makes the leader feel as if they're fools. As followers of Christ, we're expected to live as Christ. 
We're expected to live as Christ. Some of us want to choose our leaders or who we want to follow. Like, is it on Instagram that you would... No. Is it on Twitter? Instagram. All of them. You follow. You choose who you want to follow, isn't it? You choose who you want to follow. Some people have chosen some people that they wanted to follow and they found out some things and they quickly drop off. Has it happened to you before? Be honest. It has happened to me. I'm like, yeah, should I drop off? <laughs> Which one should I do now? Should I block this person? Ah! Or unfollow. Some people want to choose who they follow. When you feel choose by yourself, you will choose the wrong person because you'll be judging in the physical. Unless you have a discerning spirit and you are able to discern according to his word, then it's okay. You see, some people will say, I have a lot of followers because in life you have to have many. One person who can mentor you spiritually. One person who can mentor you in your business, in your career. Why don't you ask for a package? There are men that are packaged to follow you. I mean, to lead you. There are men that are packaged to lead you. It depends on your followership. Because, because of you, God will release an anointing upon them. That they will be packaged just for you. They will be packaged just for you. And you know what? They are so trained that in the areas that they don't know, they would guide you to the right person. A lot of us have too many followers and we get confused. You go to this one, they say go this way. You go to that one, they say go that way. You go to this one, they say go that way. God will guide you to the right person in Jesus' name. There's a testimony I have, and it just happened, um, it was yesterday. I had a dream waking up into yesterday, Saturday, and I dreamt about a friend. We've been friends for like, we passed, we've known her for 20 something years. And I knew her son, I know she has three sons, like us. But I knew them they, that when they were very young. I don't even know what they look like now. But I had this dream, and I saw this boy. He's now like a teenager. And he stood somewhere like that, and he was looking. And they showed me his face. And I said, mm, look at this face. This face looks like this person in the dream. I said, who is this person? This face looks like this person. And in the dream, they said to me, yes. He is the son of this person. I said, yes. I could now see the face on him. I said, why have, been, have I been shown this face? Holy Spirit said, begin to pray for him. I said, okay. And I started to pray. And I prayed until I woke up. And I continued to pray. And after I finished, I thought, I need to call her. I've not spoken to her in a long time. I said, I need to call her. So, forgot about it. Went for a meeting all the time. We're going, doing something. On our way, I said to pastor, I had a dream about this person. And I think I need to call her. He didn't even ask me. He said, call her then. So I was about to call her. I said, let me text. He said, no, call. So I called her. And I said to her, oh, how are you? I'm sorry, I had a dream about your son. And as I was telling her the dream, do you know, God, the Holy Spirit was telling me some, some more information about the dream. I said, I don't know which one of your sons. The Holy Spirit said he's the first one. I said, it must be the first one. She said, okay, what did you dream? So I told her. She said, yes, it's my first son. I said, okay. He is in the dream. I saw something that looks like this. I don't want to go into so much details. And she said, oh my God. Yes, it is that. She said, he's been so confused about what he wants to be. But you know what? Thank you for calling me. I am so encouraged. 
I was about to put the phone down. I prayed with her. And Holy Spirit said, no, don't put the phone down. Share the testimony of Daalola with her. So I went deeper and I shared. As soon as I finished, she said, ah, God has given me the answer. Please, I need Daalola's number. Daalola can help my son. So I said, no worries. I will send Daalola's number to you. Look, God is calling you to a place, a secret place. A secret place. Not for you, but for others. A calling is not for you. Tell yourself, the calling is not for me. It's not for me. It's for others. It's for others. That's the way you identify your calling. When your calling begins to meet the needs of others, then you will know that it's your calling. Hallelujah. Amen? What is expected from a follower? Number one, a follower must not only give at the offering plate. He must be willing to give of gifts and talents. A follower must never hold back. A follower must never hold back. He must not just say, this is all I'm going to do for this leader, and that is it. You give your all. Your all. You give your talent, your commitment, you serve your leader, you serve people around your leader. You just serve recklessly. Romans 12, 1, 2. Romans 12, 1, 2. We're not, I'm not going to waste time. You can read that. Well, 12, 1, 2. I just read. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is the true way to worship God when you release of yourself. Every part of you. Amen? It cannot be. Number two, a follower... I'm talking to somebody that is showing me something on the back. A follower must understand that trials and tribulations build patience, and with patience comes experience. Finally, he knows that experience produces hope. Every unpleasant situation brings experience. You see, to get to a time when you are following the leader, that it will become more painful. Because sometimes you have to do what you don't really want to do. Sometimes it will be tough. Sometimes you will be corrected in a way you don't like. It's not pleasant sometimes. Number three, a follower does not put his need above the needs of the one he's following. You cannot put your needs above the one you are following. If you are following God, your needs should be secondary. You just follow God. Bible says as you seek him, every other thing will be what? Added. Everything else will be added. You don't need to think about those things. Jesus is a perfect example of that. He followed God and he put Others needs above his need. That's why he's able to die for you and I. Number four, the strength of a follower is in his reference. The strength of a follower is in his reference. If we read the book of Joshua 14, 6 to 8, Joshua 14, 6 to 8, a delegation from the tribe of Judah, led by Caleb, son of Jephne, the Kenizzites, came to Joshua at Gilgal. Caleb said to Joshua, remember what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God about you and me when we were at Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land of Canaan. I returned and gave an honest report. But my brothers who went with me were frightened by the people from entering the promised land. From my part, I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. When you follow, you have many references. Many references to present. And effective, effective, leaders, effective leaders are made by successful followership. Effective leaders are made by successful 
followership. Number five, the wisdom of a follower is in his ability to take instructions. The wisdom of a follower is in his ability to take instructions. Proverbs 10, 8. He's naturally preserved in obedience. His obedience is unquestionable. Proverbs 10, it says, the wise are glad to be instructed. The wise are glad to be instructed. Those that are wise, they're very happy when they are given instructions. Amen? Number what? Only one person answered. This only one person following me. You're supposed to be following me. Now that is a test for you. You are following me. So what number? Okay, I just want to make sure everybody agrees. Number six. The humility of a follower is developed in the way they honor and value the one they follow. The humility. Humility of a follower is developed in the way they honor. They honor. Everybody say honor. Sometimes we don't honor our leaders. We don't honor the ones that we follow. And you know what? This honor thing is more in what are not spoken of. The attitude. The attitude. If you are following Christ, you should be a soldier of Christ. You should be one that another person can watch and follow. Honor, honor, honor. Honor, honor God. Honor your leaders. Treasure them. Philippians 2, 3 to 4 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interest. But take an interest in others. Don't follow somebody because of what you want from them. No. You won't get it. Don't follow somebody only because of something you want to. Follow because you have something to give. As you give, you will receive. As you give, you will receive. Amen. Number seven. The loyalty of a follower is mirrored in the way they defend their leader. The loyalty of a follower is mirrored in the way they defend their leader. When a follower is able to defend their leader, you will know that this one is a true follower. Their action in defending their leader. Even when the leader is doing something wrong, they defend their leader. They stand and, you know, it doesn't matter, but don't talk to my leader like that. Leave them to God. Don't talk to them. I won't tolerate that. Don't say it around me. There are some followers that people cannot go to to gossip. But there are some followers that start gossip. They are the ones that will start it. Once the leader is absent, say, oh, I can rest today. If he was around now, I'll be going home by two when everybody would have been sleeping on their bed. We are still in church. Peter rebuked, was rebuked by Jesus when he wanted to defend Jesus. Let's look at it. Matthew 16, 29. I know the Ushers are very upset with me. They're showing me this card that said 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said. This will never happen. This will never happen. Jesus said, eh, eh, get thee behind me, Satan. You would have expected Peter to be offended because he was showing care. He was just caring. He was just caring. Jesus said, get it behind me. He would have said, okay, next time. I won't say that again. If they lie, let them kill you. I'm only caring for her and see what she said. But when the soldiers came, he was the first person that went to them and said, I will kill you if you touch this man. 
I will kill you if you touch. That's loyalty. That's loyalty. You know, I like watching action movies. I told Tai the other day, and she was shocked. She said, oh, I'm shocked that Pastor Tony, is, Pastor Tony is saying that she likes those action movies. That's what pushes me to pray. You don't understand. That's where I get the fire to pray. When I see them carry the bullets and shooting the enemy. Oh, my God. Come and see me when I'm shooting the enemies in the place of prayer. You will see some, I mean, there's a movie we watched lately, and the guy is supposed to be a bodyguard. The bodyguard, they, look, they, they don't think about the money or their families. They stand in front of the bullets. As long as the leader is saved, they're ready to lay down their lives. They can kill themselves if the enemy touches the leader. They will not want to be alive. I'm talking about the real, 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 real bodyguards. Not the ones that are sleeping. When the leader is... leader is sitting in his office thinking there's a bodyguard outside. And the guy was sleeping with the gun. Uh, Jesus. God help that leader. Number eight, the capacity of the followers' love for the leader makes them immune to defense. Just like I gave an example. The capacity of the followers' love for the leader makes them immune to if, if offense. That people will be saying, did you hear how he spoke to you? How did he speak to me? I didn't feel any how. Please don't come and put a seed of uh, destruction in my heart. I did not feel any how. I am following. I am on duty following. There's no room for offense when you are following. No room for offense. A true follower will cry with the leader. A true follower will feel the pain of the leader. A true follower would laugh with the leader when the leader is laughing. Will cry when the leader is crying. A true follower will feel the energy of their leader. Number nine, the humility lifestyle of a follower puts him on the right path. Puts him on the right path. Jeremiah 6, 16 to 17. Jeremiah 6, 16 to 17 says, this is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroad and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Why the old godly way? Why the old godly way? Because the old godly way is the way. It's not to be overlooked. When the follower follows the leader with humility, they can never go wrong. They will follow in the path that has been set before them. Number 10, which is the last one, a follower that walk in the path of their leader will never go wrong as long as they are following. Amen? Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 26, 3 to 5. Uzziah, Second Chronicles 26, 3 to 5. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother was Jecolia from Jerusalem. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his father Amaziah has done. He followed in the footsteps of his father, and he did what is right. And because of that, the Lord was with him. Amen? You will do what is right in the eyes of the Almighty in Jesus' name. I want you to um, reflect on this message this morning, this um, presentation. I want you to reflect and ask yourself, who am I following and why am I following them? Who am I following? Why am I following them? Who is following me and why are they following me? Who is following me? And why are they following Is anybody following me? If they are, why are they following me? Who am I following? And why am I following them?